and thanks for joining me today. I'm Sarah Miles and in this video I'm going to be sharing the old tale of the Frog King and I will also be sharing the painting that came from it. When I sketched out my design I decided to explore using uh, more materials to create different textures. For this painting I used black gesso to cover the canvas in first, especially as I think I wanted it a little bit darker, not too bright. And then in my basket of goodies I also used modelling paste to create the 3D effect of the brambles. Someone later suggested that I could use string, so I might do that another time. I also used, oh I've got some leaves here, I used a gold leaf to create the shiny effects on the crown, you can tell that. And then the last thing I used, that was a bit different, were Pebia paints, which was so much fun to create the jewels with. There are other things that I've got in this basket that I use for other stuff, like that butterfly uses a few things, but I'll show that in, a, in another video. Okay, let's crack on. It is among one of the oldest in the collection that the Grimm's collected and all the versions don't vary too much apart from the Disney's The Princess and the Frog, which is wildly different. In some, the frog resides next to a river rather than a well, and the tale is sometimes known as the Frog Prince, or Ein Heinrich. I apologise if I said that wrong. <laughs> Ein Heinrich is a character who is only introduced at the end of the story, which makes it an odd choice for the title. Once upon a time, when wishes still came true, there lived a king who had beautiful daughters. The youngest was so lovely that even the sun, which had seen so many things, was filled with wonder when it shone upon her face. On the king's grounds was a well, and when the weather turned really hot, the king's daughter enjoyed spending time there. She would sit on the edge of the cool well, and if she got bored, she would take out her golden ball and throw it up in the air and catch it. This was her favourite toy. One day, it happened that the golden ball didn't end up in the princess's hands and instead fell down the well. Splash! The princess burst into tears as she saw her ball sink further and further into the well, and she kept weeping louder and louder, unable to stop herself. Suddenly a voice could be heard over her wailing. What's going on, princess? Stones would be moved to tears if they could hear you. The princess turned round to try and figure out where the voice was coming from and caught sight of a frog which had stuck its big old ugly head out of the water. Oh, it's you, you old splish splasher, she said. I'm crying because my golden ball has fallen into the well. Be quiet and just stop that snivelling, said the frog. I think I can help you, but what will you give me in return? Whatever you want, dear frog she said. My dresses, my pearls, my jewels, even the golden crown I'm wearing. The frog said, I haven't the least interest in your dresses. Of course, really, he's a frog. <laughs> and your pearls and jewels, or your golden crown. But if you promise to love me and let me be your companion and playmate, let me sit beside you at the table and eat from your little golden plate, let me drink from your cup, let me sleep in your bed, if you promise me that, I will dive right down into the well and bring back your golden ball. Oh, thank you, she said. I'll give you anything you want as long as you get it back for me. But all the while she was thinking, what nonsense that stupid frog is talking. He's down there in the water croaking away with all the other frogs. How could anyone want to have him as a companion? Soon the frog returned with the golden ball and the princess was overjoyed. She picked it up and ran off with it. Wait for me, the frog cried out. Take me with you. I can't run the way you can. He croaked as loudly as he could, but it did him no good at all. The princess had lost interest, hurried home as fast as her legs would carry her and quickly forgot about the poor frog who had to crawl back down into the well. Next day, the princess sat down to dinner with the king and with some courtiers, and was eating dinner from her plate when something came crawling up the marble staircase. Spish splash, spish splash. 
When it reached the top of the stairs, it knocked at the door and called out, Princess! Youngest princess! Let me in! The princess ran to the door to see who was there. When she opened it, she saw the frog standing in front of her. Terrified, she slammed the door as hard as she could and returned to the table. The king saw how troubled she was and said, My child, what are you afraid of? Is there some kind of giant at the door coming after you? Oh no, she replied. It wasn't a giant. It was just a disgusting frog. What in the world does a frog want with you? Oh, father, dear father, yesterday when I was playing by the well, my little golden ball fell into the water. I was crying so hard the frog got it for me, and because he insisted, I promised that he could be my companion. I never thought that he would be able to leave the water. Now he's outside and he's demanding to come in and see me. Just then there was another knock at the door, and a voice cried out, Princess, little princess, let me in. Think back now to yesterday's oath down by the cold blue water. Princess, little princess, let me in. The king declared, Once you make a promise to someone, you have to keep it. Just go and let him in. The princess went over and opened the door. The frog hopped right into the room and followed close to her heels until she reached her chair. Then he sat down and cried out, Lift me up and put me next to you. The princess hesitated, but the king ordered her to obey. Once the frog was up on the chair, he wanted to get on the table. And once he was there, he said, Push your golden plate closer to me so that we can eat together. The princess really didn't want to, but was made to by her father. The frog enjoyed his meal, but the princess didn't enjoy hers. Finally, the frog said, I've had enough to eat and I'm really tired. Take me up to your room and turn down the silken covers on your bed. The princess began to weep for she was terrified of the clammy frog. She didn't dare touch him and now he was going to sleep in her beautiful bed. The king grew angry and said, You shouldn't scorn someone who helped you when you were in trouble. The princess picked up the frog and carried him up to her room to put in a corner. While she was lying in bed, he came crawling over and said, I'm tired and want to sleep as much as you do. Lift me up into your bed or I'll tell your father. The princess became really annoyed, picked up the frog and threw him with all her might against the wall. Now you'll get to your rest, you disgusting frog. When the frog fell to the ground, he was no longer a frog, but a prince with beautiful bright eyes. At her father's bidding, he became her dear companion and husband. He told her that a wicked witch had cast a spell on him and that only a princess could release him. The next day they planned to set out together for his kingdom. The next morning a coach drove up. It was drawn by eight white horses in golden harnesses with white ostrich feathers on their heads. At the back of the coach stood faithful Heinrich, the servant of the young king. This is the person I mentioned earlier. Faithful Heinrich had been so saddened by the transformation of his master into a frog that three hoops had been placed around his chest to keep his heart from bursting with pain and sorrow. Now the coach had arrived to take the young king back to his kingdom and faithful Heinrich lifted the two of them into the carriage and took his place into the rear. He was elated by his master's transformation. When they had covered a good distance, the prince heard a cracking noise behind him, as if something had broken. He turned around and cried out, Heinrich, the coach is in danger! No, my lord, it's not the coach, but a hoop from around my heart, which was in deep pain while you were down in the well, living as a frog. Two more times the prince heard the cracking noise and he was sure that the coach was falling apart but it was only the sound of the hoops breaking from faithful Heinrich's chest for his master had been set free and was happy at last. If you'd like to know anything else about the Frog King or the painting and how it was created, just put your comments in the comment section below and I'll get back to you or I may make another video to explain a bit further. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.